is up everybody today is a super exciting day we are taking the ecoboost fox body to the dyno uh, we're on our way now i'm going to stop at radium and pick up a new radiator cap as the one i have didn't seal correctly and they have them in stock and it's only a little bit out of the way so it's kind of neat it's sick having somebody local nearby to be able to grab that stuff from but yeah so we're gonna head to the dyno and sorry this road is really bumpy um and Jason from Link ECU is going to tune it. Uh, it'll be the first time we've really spun the car past, you know, 3,000 RPM and moved it around the parking lot. But all that does work. Our drivetrain is working currently under the circumstances of driving it on and off the trailer and moving it around. Um, and a bunch of other things. But, yeah, so hopefully it uh, jumps on there. We can get some... Uh, tuning pulls and get the part throttle tuned out um, also work on uh, direct injection timing um, of the pump and the injectors uh, we also have to install a fuel pressure sensors on the uh, feed so we can uh, set that properly I think it's a little high right now and it's buzzing the injection pump um, but yeah it's not easy it's not like a normal car like if you're off by injection timing and pump timing by just a, a couple milliseconds it's worth 50 or 60 horsepower on the dyno so it's gonna be a lot of work today um, we're gonna figure it out and uh, hopefully by the end of the day make some power pulls uh, the goal is to get it up to about 20 or 22 pounds of boost today um, and we'll run it at that for a little while um, and do some shakedown and testing and then once we feel comfortable then we'll turn it up to 25 or 26 which is pretty much max for the stock turbo um, and we're also gonna ramp in the boost a little bit later than stock. These things can make 25 pounds of boost at like 2,400 RPM, um, which isn't really necessary for what we're doing. I love responsive turbos, um, and I love them to hit full boost very early, but you only wanna make as much boost that's needed to make power. So extra boost down low, all it does is create a lot of heat. Um, so I'd rather give up a little bit and have it have a big torque spike at 3,500 or so, which will be insanely responsive instead of 2,500 and keep it alive. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I really don't know what to expect. We have some goals, but I don't know if they're realistic yet. I think 350 on the horsepower side and 400 maybe torque, 380 torque leaving today would make me super happy. And then we can head to uh, park and do some testing and drivability stuff. to the dyno over at Superior Subi and it runs um, got it off the trailer and uh, we're about to go jump this thing on the dyno and uh, see how she did Whew, it's, hot. it's 115 today <laughs> it's warm it's probably 130 in the dyno bay great for tuning though because we'll know if it's ever gonna overheat get hot or have any detonation problems but so we've got New boost control solenoid in and set up. Obviously it's a little crude right now, but uh, just getting it so we can get it set up on the dyno, then we'll mount that probably here and shorten the lines to go underneath. All right, well we have her strapped down to the dyno here. Haven't made any pulls. Jason's just in there getting the idle a little bit better. He's plugged in. got this thing strapped down we're about to roll it and tighten the strap so that the car is perfectly straight and then start making some hits So yeah, we, uh, we've got some pulls, we've got boost control working, we're just trying to dial in the duty cycle of it. Um, it's so hot, dude. It's 
It's literally 114 today. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, getting the, the timing figured out. We've got a knock sensor that's like detecting some knock, but it's not really doing that. So it's something else, whether it might be a motor mount setup or uh, maybe something in the clutch. But it's just uh, in between cylinders three and four that's reading that. So we're gonna get that dialed in, figured out, pull the plug, check to make sure, just to confirm we aren't getting any knock, but it doesn't seem like it at all. We're not really leaning on it. Um, and it seems very uh, RPM dependent, not load dependent. So um, we're gonna make some more pulls. I think we're like at 340 torque and it's instant at like 2800 RPM. We're actually gonna limit the torque down low and bring the power in up top because there's no reason to make a bunch of boost before you actually make power. Um, so we're gonna just get the right amount of boost it needs to maximize the uh, power um, and not give it any more so there's less cylinder pressure down low. We don't really need uh, 400 foot pounds at 2,000. At 3,200, it's plenty. <laughs> Jason's on the phone with panic over some wiring things, but we're making some power. We're controlling some boost. Uh, 313 on the horsepower, uh, 340 on the torque, and the, it's instant power, and then controlling the torque really, really well. We're only revving it to 6,000 right now. Uh, we'll continue to rev it a little bit higher as needed, um, but we're just filling this map up. The blue run, you can see we just added a little bit of boost right here to make sure the boost solenoid is working. Um, so we're gonna get the boost perfect, uh, about 17 pounds at uh, 3,000, which is uh, only 400 RPM after we're hitting the gas, basically. Um, so it's instant and then runs across the top. And then right here, we're starting to add some boost to, to keep the power climbing. Uh, I don't really need more than 340 foot pounds at 2,900. Um, I think that's good. And then we're gonna just try to make more power up here. I'll, if we leave today at 117 degrees inside the dyno bay at 350, I'm pretty pumped. So this is where we're leaving today, 3.30, 363, again, controlling boost, and we're only at 20 up top, and we're losing uh, the ability to adjust the exhaust cam, so we're easily going over 350, and then we have another four pounds of boost, and it's 116 degrees in here right now. What, what were the IATs? Hot. Hot? Like, oh yeah. So, at normal operating, this thing's gonna make I think the goal would be obviously easily obtained like 360 or 370 horsepower. So, and then we'll be able to rev it a little bit higher. We're losing right now, but we're gonna unstrap this thing and uh, get get it ready to go get shake, shaked down, shooken down. So you may have noticed that in the video, my outfit had changed a few times. So did your hair length. And my hair length. Those were all the dyno videos over the course of about a month. How long was it? Three uh, weeks? It was a month and a week. So a month, yeah. Five weeks. Um, because it's direct injection, because we're like pretty much the first people to do a standalone setup with this, because of all these reasons. Um, we had kept going back to the dyno to solve things. We had problems with boost control, which we figured out. We had problems with the DI pump and the amount of fuel pressure In that it was getting. Miles, take exit one onto 33rd Avenue. The amount of fuel it was getting to the pump, the, the pump timing versus the cam timing, because the pumps ran off of the cam. So the injection timing versus the pump timing has to have the correct algorithm. It's not just as simple as like, oh, fuel timing is this and injection, uh, ignition timing is this. It's a lot of other little variables. So we did end up getting it dialed and set up and uh, we're finally gonna go get to drive the car and test the car. Uh, so we're gonna head to park in the next episode and uh, actually do some driving and fingers crossed our first test day goes well.